Hi, it's Mrs. Benton again, and this little video is just about the online learning participation guidelines. I teach English language arts for the seventh grade on the Timberwolf team, and I have um, several sections that are in person, but then um, one section that's 100% online learning. And regardless of your model of learning, um, we all will have the same participation guidelines for online platforms. Because um, even when we're in person, we'll be using the computers and doing collaborative work um, online. And so this particular presentation is for all modes of learning. Um, so what's in this piece are just the participation guidelines. I'll just go through um, for its learning and for out of Eden learn or any other platform we're engaging in together for sure. And then this picture of the lemonade is just making lemon lemonade out of lemons is a saying that my grandma always used to say, we aren't in the most ideal situation at the moment. Um, and so we're just trying to make the best out of it for sure. Um, and these participation guidelines are good and valid for any, any particular time. So um, I'll thank you in advance for your best efforts to create a safe and dynamic online learning community. Um, and then afterwards, um, you'll just complete a really quick written response um, in its learning afterwards. So our learning target um, is I can express what it means to be a writer and a reader. And we'll be taking a look at that and discussing that learning target throughout the entire year. Um, and so we haven't yet dealt, started into that yet, but we will. And this particular presentation is gonna be delving deeper into the specificities of what this looks like online to be a writer and a reader. Um, so the short-term learning target is I can express what it means to be a responsible participant online using specific details from the participation guidelines to defend my, resp my response. And so what we're going to be going through right now are the participation guidelines. And you'll want to use specific details from this presentation in your written response when this presentation is completed. Um, so here's some examples of the learning platforms last year when we locked down with the coronavirus and everything went online we were on google classroom um most of i think all of escalante middle school was in on um the google classroom platform um district wide we're switching from google classroom to a platform a learning management platform called it's learning and we'll still be using the google suite and collaborative documents and google documents and slides and all those pieces embedded into it's learning so anything we do will be posted there and that'll be your go-to for any videos or assignments or lessons um, explanations it's like a communication platform for us for sure and then um, later in the year, usually in the spring, we'll do um, an engagement with Out of Eden Learn, which is a Harvard-run platform where we collaborate and learn with students around the world globally. And so you never know exactly where we're, where the students are going to come from. Um, for the particular walking party, um, but in the past, um, we've collaborated with India and Mexico and um, countries in Europe and students on the East Coast in the United States, um, all over the place. Australia is usually always participating. Um, and so that's an exciting collaborative piece um, that we can look forward to in the spring for sure. And anything to do with Out of Eden Learn would be posted on It's Learning. So you could find it there. The link would be there. The assignment would be in It's Learning. And then the collaboration with the other students would happen on the Out of Eden platform. But you get to everything through It's Learning. So you just have this one-stop shop for getting to everything that you need to do um, in terms of progressing in your learning. And then No Red Ink is um, a platform that is differentiated for grammar. So basically you can learn grammar at your own pace. Like if you still need to work on just a couple of those like sight words or something that just have been tricky for you, you can work on that, but you can also work all the way up through university level uh, grammar um, concepts. And so I, I open it all up 
And then you'll be able to identify what, what gaps you have, what you need to go back and revisit from an earlier grade, um, and then push your learning in terms of grammar on that particular site. And then once again, that site will be posted on its learning. So everything that you need will be on its learning. That's where you go first. And then you can get to these other platforms afterwards um, from its learning. So on um, Out of Eden Learn, when we do that piece, um, you can't use your real name um, because it's like a pen pal situation and you don't you can't use any identifying information um, on the rest of the platforms it's totally fine uh, to use your real name um, and then any of these platforms um, they're not the place for a lack of genuine serious communication it's not a place to spam um, it is for our learning and to pro progress in our academic discourse or academic discussion. Um, so it's not like um, a social media platform, for instance. Um, it's a platform for us to push ourselves uh, in, our, in terms of academics. Um, I really want you to be yourself and I want you to share your thoughts and ideas and personal stories. That's what's gonna make things the most interesting. Um, any of our platforms, out of Eden Learn or It's Learning or where we're communicating with one another. Um, it's a great place to just share who you are, your opinions. Um, and then when we do the discussion pieces, like the community or classmates really want to hear from you and want to know your genuine input. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say and seeing what you turn in. And then likewise, it's really interesting to read and respond to other people's um, posts in the class. Um, so in addition to being yourself, you want to be sensitive and respectful so that no one in our diverse community feels hurt or offended. So um, there's just zero tolerance for negative posts or comments about an individual or one's nationality, religion, race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, political views, or cultural practices. We just want to be inclusive and respectful to everyone in our learning community. Um, you just want to reflect before you hit post. Um, or save, you just want to think about all the people who will be able to read it, like the other kids in the class, anyone who co-teaches the class with me, I'll be able to read it. When we're in Out of Eden Learn, like um, there's people from Harvard who use Out of Eden Learn um, data for their research and stuff, and Paul Salapek is um, doing this huge global walk with uh, National Geographic, and he regularly gets into Out of Eden Learn and takes a look at students' posts. So you just want to think just a minute, reflect for a minute before you post it, because you can't take it back. There's that digital footprint piece where you post it, and then it's out there. Um, there's a few things to think about, like in that reflective piece. Um, how could your post or comment be interpreted by different members of the community? What kinds of online comments might be upsetting to you? Could someone feel uncomfortable with or hurt by something you're posting? And then how might you adjust the wording or the content of your post to prevent any concerns? Like how might you revise it? So just spend that one minute revising. You're proofreading for any errors, but at the same time, you're reading through what you're saying and just checking out inside, like, how that might that be interpreted. And you're always welcome to send a draft to me privately, and I can help you out with your revision process, no problem. Um, if you notice that a person seems insensitive or hurtful or inappropriate, just speak up. Just let us know. Um, uh, there'll be some sort of discussion with the student and the post may be edited or removed. Um, they may not have meant it, might have been an accident, um, but we definitely wanna have a conversation about that so everyone feels safe to express themselves in this online platform. Um, and then that being said, like you wanna be compassionate if somebody has made a mistake and has posted something hurtful or inappropriate, they may not have realized it, um, you want to report the concerning post right away so that I can help facilitate mending that relationship and just talking about what, you know, what we might do differently next time. Um, you want to be compassionate to yourself, too, if you've made a mistake in that regard. And um, we all do make mistakes 
And we just want to be compassionate with others and compassionate with yourselves. Um, when people are sharing, you want to be sure that you're listening carefully to what they really are saying. Um, you really want to pay attention. Notice any key details about what they're saying and sharing and try to take things from their point of view or do some perspective taking. Um, walk in their shoes a little bit. So really try to listen carefully and put yourself in their position. So when you're engaging, you want to be thoughtful about the process. Um, it's best if you write in full sentences um, and be thoughtful about what you post. There are times when I'll say it's okay to use bullet points or jot dots, um, and then I'll, I'll be specific about that. Um, but you really want to work on your academic discourse and your written piece um, and use full sentences the majority of the time. There are dialogue toolkits, which I'm going to share with you, which will help you um, in your response. And then we'll be using some thinking routines, um, some routines or ways of learning that help you bring your thoughts out and to be visible to you and to your peers. And those routines, they will just become routine for you, and that helps deepen your learning. And so that's one thing that you can reference as we're going along. Um, inappropriate posts, we have definitely touched on these already a little bit, but these following things are inappropriate. You don't want to tease others, including people who are members of your class or people who are your close friends, because if you're like teasing somebody you're really close with, then other people might feel like they might make, make them feel uncomfortable, feel like they're going to be teased. They might feel really sad for the person who's being who's being teased. It's just not the appropriate place. It's so easy to be misunderstood online. I mean, even in class, it's just, um, it's just really tricky. Um, definitely no cruel or bullying posts, posts or comments that include negative statements about a person or whole groups of people would be inappropriate or posts that would likely make others feel uncomfortable, you know, like, something that like a picture of somebody that broke dress code, for instance, um, might make people feel uncomfortable. Um, and then we already covered the out of and learn piece and we'll just revisit that in the spring in terms of not sharing personal information. And so we'd be working with all of these students from around the world um, and Harvard runs the platform. That's a particular guideline for once we engage in out of even learn and then of course there's the durango 9r technology policies and i'll you'll have a copy of this presentation and you can link on that and delve deeper into that if you so choose um so to help you in your responses to your peers when we're doing um both spoken responses and then when we're writing in a discussion board um the interact moves really do help. And I'll go through those with you here. Um, one thing that you can do is just notice what stands out to you or catches your eye in the person's post. So what do you notice in particular? Be specific. Um, so just simply noticing something can be enough. Like that, that shows the person that that was the most important piece of what they said or the most important piece of what they wrote down. Um, you can also do an appreciate, so share what you like, appreciate or value in the post you've read, and you wanna be as specific as possible in all of these pieces using specific details to defend your opinion or to defend what you're saying. Um, another interact move is to probe for more details. You can ask questions that will help give you a better sense of the, of the other person's perspective. Um, and so questions show the person who wrote it or the person who's speaking. It shows that you're really listening, that you're thinking about what they had to say, and it shows that you're interested and that you want to know more. Another interact move that's super helpful is um, the snip. So you can cut, a, cut and paste a phrase or a sentence from the original post into your comment in quotation marks, it shows it's not yours. Um, and then you can ask a question about it or say what you find interesting or important about it. Um, and just expand a little bit on what they already said. 
you can even just put it in quotations and say, like, I really agree with this. You can talk about connections, which moves us to the next piece. Um, a connection is making a connection between something in the post and your own experiences, feelings, or interests. So you could just be like, oh, I felt that way too, or that happened to me too, or that was my understanding as well. And so those connections can be a powerful piece and offer opportunity to extend your learning um, even deeper. Um, and the extension is um, what I'm looking for a lot of the time. I really appreciate this particular interact move where you describe how that person's post or how that person's um, comment extended your thoughts in a new direction and gave you a new perspective. How did it extend your learning or make you think of new things? How did it push you as a learner or push you as a person? And so that's a really powerful interact move. And that's one thing that I'm keeping my eye on um, all the time. And it's one of the more difficult pieces, but it indicates um, a really deep level of learning. And so I'm always keeping my eye out for that particular interact move. Oops, this is frozen. There we go. So in its learning, there's an assignment in its learning, just going through what we, um, after these are, these are the guidelines that we just went through. Um, and your goal is to express what it means to be a responsible participant online, using specific details from the participation guidelines from this presentation to defend your response. So you might want to take a look at this presentation one more time um, and then answer the following two questions in complete sentences, incorporating a minimum of two words from the vocabulary list. Your answer to each question should contain a minimum of um, three to five sentences. Um, so the first question is, what does it look like when someone is a responsible participant online? Use specific details from this presentation. A sentence stem that might help start you out is a responsible participant online. And that might be a good way to start. Not mandatory, but suggested if you need a good, if you need a starting point. And question two is when working online with peers, what is something that you appreciate? Like when you're thinking about collaborative work, either in the classroom or online, when you're collaborating or working together with other classmates, what is something that you appreciate or helps deepen your learning? Um, helps facilitate your learning. So a sentence stem that might help you start out with that response is, I appreciate it when my peers, and you can finish the sentence. And then here's the vocabulary list. Remember in the directions, um, I'm challenging you to use two of these following words from the vocabulary list, interpret, toolkit, interact, genuine, diverse, compassionate, reflect, perspective, extend. Um, so two of those words in your written response would be amazing and a minimum of three to five sentences for each of these two questions. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. So thank you so much for your sustained attention. This was quite a long lecture. So, um, thank you so much and, uh, stay calm and learn on.